Hello everyone, welcome back to RCH Builders. So we have finally gotten all of our roughing inspections, <clears throat> our framing inspection, and then uh, finally our insulation inspection. So we've got R15 in the 2x4 walls, we've got R30 up top. A lot of people will just uh, not put insulation up top at all, they'll sheet rock it and then they will go ahead and they'll use blown-in insulation in the attic above. <clears throat> Personally, I do not like blown-in insulation. To me, it does not work as good as the actual bat insulation. It has a tendency to compact over time, especially a lot easier, and then uh, become almost nothing. Uh, and just even even when before it's compact uh, the after effect does not seem to be as good in my opinion <clears throat> you don't get as good of insulation value for the time for the for what's there uh, I'm not sure if we sh I showed it in another video or not but we've got blocking here for the shelving in the closet uh, kind of hard to see in there we've got the light from this window area that's just Interfering there we go from this angle works a little bit better So got our R15 in there again these windows uh, and doors normally you're not you can't get your insulation inspection until these are in But that's why we still kept the uh, house wrap Uncut over the top of them so it's still watertight in here so that we could get that while waiting on windows and doors uh, It's looking like those will still not be here for another week. So but at least we can start sheet rocking. So down here in the basement, we have a little bit different on the insulating. And we opened that up temporarily to bring the sheet rock in. Uh, I believe that they're finished. So we will be closing that up and duct taping it back shut again in just a little bit before we start the sheet rock. But again, on the in between this floor and the floor above, we have R30. Most people are going to use R19, but we had 2x10 floor joists. We were able to use R30. Uh, plus, also, um, these right here are 2x4s that we scabbed down so that the 2x10s match the height of this beam. So it was a way to make it all line up nice and evenly and smoothly. And add a three-quarter board on below the beam so we had a room to get our wire in for the fan box one thing that I do not think I showed in the electrical is <clears throat> how we would get receptacles on this block wall so we did two things one we put in these basically fur inch strips you can use uh, two by twos instead of two by fours but right now <clears throat> the pressure treated 2x4s were actually cheaper than the 2x2s. The other thing is is when you shoot a 2x2 with a ram set gun, unless the grain on it is really good, you have a, t a lot more tendency to split it and you're not have to split these. So just cost effectiveness right now, it was cheaper to go with the 2x4s. Um, so we did that. Um, eventually, I'm sure the 2x2s would be cheaper, but <clears throat> right now they're not. Uh, this is how we got our power down. And we did it in multiple spots. So we didn't have to drill through with these because they're still back far enough by being able to lay them behind the front 2x4 and against the 2x6 walls. And then we just uh, come down. You have to use a metal pipe to help protect it because this wire is going to be within that distance. And so a metal box with what is called a plaster ring. So there are different things. This is, right here is called a plaster ring. It comes out about a half inch right here which allows the sheetrock to still sit flush and then you just mount the outlet to it and then we use a what is uh, called a terminal adapter in electrical I'm not sure what Home Depot may call it I think they just call it a push on bushing but it's called a terminal adapter it is the, where you terminate or end a um, EMT pipe other than uh, attaching it into a box right there which is what's considered a an actual um you know basically a male adapter is what they refer to it in plumbing in uh 
in uh, electrical is usually just considered a connector. We'll call it a Romex connector or a, in this case, EMT connector or a flex connector. So we've got our line set right here. This is for a mini split that will go on that wall. Um, so like I said, we use R30 on the ceiling, back to insulation. <laughs> um, on the two by six walls, around there, all the way around through the back, and then right here, we used R19. Let's see, right here, you can see R19. It's a, it's a, that's what you're supposed to use inside two by six walls. Gives you a little more insulating properties. Um, this wall was only a two by four, so we only used R15. But we did R19, and then along this block wall, here where we have the furring strips just to give them even more added and just to help insulate against the block because the block holds a lot of it'll hold cold and it'll hold heat so we are putting in it is our 7.5 let's see where is one right there our 7.5 what it is is it's one and a half inch thick foam board that we're putting over that over that and we just we ran out, um, we have bought out three different stores, and we just need two more pieces, basically, but because we get two, two of these columns out of one. So we need like one and two more pieces to be able to finish it. But it also let me let you see, you know, our two layers of insulation. We've got this going behind it, and then we have this in front. And then uh, I'm also planning on, because we have some left over anyway, and it won't hurt none back here where the washer is of course like i said we got the r19 here and then we'll put in this two by four wall that was built in front of the two by six we'll do r15 there and then inside the little crawl space that's back there that you can't see right now right now it's actually completely walled off from both sides except for we could obviously move one of these to get in there we'll bust through there with brick later uh, in there we again have insulation that is up in the floor joists but it is reversed it's facing the other way the paper is up the insulation is facing downward and that's because in there the uh, vapor barrier is supposed to go up against the heated area which will be the top down here uh, this insulation technically could have gone either direction, doesn't really matter. It could have been just unfaced fully uh, because you got heat upstairs and you got heat downstairs. So it doesn't really matter which direction it went in. It's just a lot easier, um, less itchy to put it up this way. So that's why we did it that, that way. So from there... I think, uh, obviously, our next step is we're going to be working on sheetrock. So, that's all we get left is uh, doing sheetrock now. Um, as far as the next step, from there, uh, we'll be able to uh, start uh, mudding and finishing it and all that. And then we still got the brick outside. We've got the... Uh, um, wood siding that will be going up but the brick has to be done first i can't get the brick done until after the doors and windows come in and that's only for this one double or quad door that's going to go down here in the basement the rest of the doors and windows are actually going to be up top where the wood siding is so the only one that's affecting the brick is that one but we got to get that in before we can have the brick done um we still got uh, to build the stairs and the landings for the deck outside um, then we still got to paint, we got to put in all the receptacles, switches, fans, lights, so probably have a lot of uh, tutorials on assembling products, installing toilets, um, of course we still got to tile the shower too, so uh, some people may be looking forward to seeing the tiling process, um, so we still got lots of stuff to do with uh, these videos, so Hope y'all enjoy watching, and we'll see you the next time.